How's it going everyone, Dale the Artist here. In today's video will be a time lapse of how I go about sculpting my stylized characters inside of Blender. Now I start with the default cube and add a subdivision surface modifier and bring it into sculpt mode with symmetry turned on. That way I can manipulate the forms and get the basic shapes and blackouts done very easily without any lag. Then I'll pin the sphere for the nose and ears and manipulate those also with symmetry turned on. And then for the neck, I don't always bring in a sphere, sometimes I use the mask tool. With the eyes, I also append a sphere and I'll go into edit mode and split it right down the middle and I'll rotate both halves as well as add a solidify modifier to add thickness. Then I'll go back into sculpt mode and better position these and form the face to fit the eyes. So it makes sense. Then I'll move forward to, you know, repositioning the nose. Also ensuring that I have symmetry turned on and I'll start to manipulate the ears to better form the shapes that I want to go for. And then once I'm satisfied with the position, I'll start to create the details around it. Just real minute and minor, no major details just yet. Then let's rotate around to the face and eyebrows. And let's assume that this character has lips and I want to poke that mouth area out as well as bring the jaw in. Because my character is going to be a child or an old man. I'm not 100% sure just yet, but I'm uh, you know sticking to my stylized forms. And I'm not doing any harsh lines just yet. Now, when I'm satisfied, I'll move forward to merging the parts together and, you know, remeshing this as one piece so it doesn't appear to be one model with separate body parts. Then I'll start to identify some of the landmarks that I want to stand out, like the brow line and the nostril areas. And I may or may not, you know, bring out the cheekbones, but I also forgot that I'm going to be doing a stylized piece, so I need to smooth those out. Now I'll start to work on the harsh lines on the eyes so we can get some pupil dilation in the future as well as, you know, bring out the eyelids and make it make more sense. And I didn't like the mouth so I decided to do it over and that's also a good part about keeping the topology relatively low so you can still manipulate things and get rid of parts you don't like. Now that it's in the middle of a high and low topology right now, I can, uh, you know, exaggerate some of the detail and capitalize on areas that I want to be um, more exaggerated. And I'll move forward by adding a quick shader to the character skin and going to a render mode so I can see how this looks, um, you know, at least so far as a quick preview. Now these textures aren't official, they're just something so I can get a good representation of how this is going. And once I separate the parts that I want, I'll go and I'll start working on the lighting. So I'll go and add an HDRI so I can get real world logic from the environment and then I'll move back into adding an actual light for the scene so I can focus on highlights and shaded areas, shadows, so forth and so on. Once the lighting is complete, I'll go back to the face sculpt and I'll start creating my final adjustments of the jaw as well as the cranial section. Moving forward, I'll start to append a sphere and sculpt that around the head to create the baseline for the hair. Now to create the hair strings, I use a method that I taught in a previous tutorial which I'll link above. And this uses a curve and a path to manipulate the string's direction and positioning. Now, this way is really vital and it differs from creating hair particles because hair particles are a lot harder to control and it bogs down your system a lot. Now, this way is easy to form each shape individually by using points, which are vertices, and using the direction of the curves. And I will admit this method is really time consuming, but it yields a great result in the end. Now creating the eyebrows, I append a plane, go to edit mode, turn on snapping and project individual elements as well as apply a shrink wrap modifier so that I can create points or vertices on the surface of the face. Now this method is identical to creating retopology and I turn on wireframe so I can see what I'm doing as I'm starting to shape the eyebrows. And what's cool about this method is you can just add a solidify modifier as well to, so you can add thickness and extract it from the surface. I'll then go into edit mode and start to add some supporting edge loops. Now supporting edge loops are you know, ideal because they support the main structure and foundation of the base shape once you add that solidify modifier to smooth it out. Now once complete and satisfied with the eyebrow, we can add a mirror modifier to duplicate this on the opposite side of the face so we don't have to do this twice. So once I'm satisfied with eyebrows, I'll go and see how this looks as a preview render. And I think I could use a little bit more buildup and volume in certain areas. So I'll use the buildup brush and the move brush to manipulate certain forms of the nostril area, as well as build up on the chin 
cheeks, so forth and so on. And this adds more realism to the character and capitalizing on areas like the ears. Now once I'm satisfied, I'll start going to areas that I neglected earlier like the neck, torso, things of that sort. And this is a, you know, rinse and repeat at this point. I'm just starting to build up those structures to create the foundation of the character. Thank you. 